Welcome back to the Whole Career Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Strawn, and I'm accompanied by my co-host, Sky Kellogg. We are excited because we have two great individuals with us for this episode. Uh, we are joined by Janine Nyland, who is an executive director in care management with Advent Health, and also with Christine Sidholm, who is a the director, the director, excuse me, of care management with Advent Health. Uh, how are you two ladies doing today? Doing very well. Thank you. Doing great. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So I'll get started and jump right in. Would you mind each formally introducing yourself and giving us an overview of your current position within Advent Health? And we'll start with you, Christine. So my name is Christine Sidholm. I am the Corporate Director of Care Management. I am a social worker by background, and I actually went back to school and got my master's in health services administration. I have been with Advent Health for 19 years. I lead the Advent Health Core acute care management standard work and processes. So my responsibilities include assessment of current state, um, building consensus across the markets, and development of implementation plans with market care management leaders. I actively participated in the development and deployment of strategic plans and workflow processes for care management across the organization to enhance consumer experience. I serve as a subject matter expert resource for hospital care management leaders for orientation, education, standard work and processes, as well as change management for implementation of corporate initiatives. Hello, and thank you for hosting us, um, Sky and Brandon. It's very nice to be here today. Uh, I've been a nurse for 34 years. I have my Bachelor of Science in Nursing, but I also obtained my Master of Science in Nursing with a healthcare systems management focus. The, the first half of my career, I really focused on hospital nursing and nursing leadership, but the last 18 years, I've really dedicated into care, care management, care coordination, and I came to Advent Health about 10 years ago and served as the care management director at our Orlando campus. And then later I moved to East Florida Division and served as the Executive Director of Care Management, Utilization Management, and Clinical Documentation Integrity. Um, I now serve as the Corporate Executive Director for Advent Health um, over care management. And I'm responsible for developing and, and leading the execution of the strategic vision for care management and enhancing patient outcomes, um, patient satisfaction, operational efficiencies, um, all across the Advent Healthcare continuum. I, I'll say key to my role is that strategic cross-functional partnerships and relationships and collaborations so that we can ensure our patients experience seamless whole person care across our Advent Healthcare continuum. Wonderful. Thank you both so much. We appreciate you being here today and we are excited to highlight care management as it's one of those areas within the healthcare system that is not always fully understood. So we're happy to dive into that and, and help our internal team members as well as external um, listeners get a better understanding. So if you could start, could you, um, I'll direct this question to Christine first. Could you talk about how you got your start within care management, especially coming from uh, that social work background? Great question. And, you know, I've always known I wanted to help my community with their health care needs. Growing up, my parents took care of Egyptians that were in the United States under asylum. So my parents would house them, you know, buy them groceries, obtain health care access for them, take them to classes so that they can learn how to read, write, and speak English. They even hired attorneys for them so that they can stay in the States legally. So I pray that I follow my parents in their footsteps and help my community navigate the healthcare system and get the medical help that they really need. Being at Advent Health allows me to follow my dream in helping my community. And I am also blessed to show God's love through our mission with every interaction that I have with the community. Christine, that is a beautiful story. How wonderful and, and what a what a way to be able to honor. Uh, what your family did for others to carry out that legacy. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And, and Janine, could you share insight into how you entered care management? I thank you for this question because care managers all have a very interesting story in how they arrived at care management. And I, I love Christine's story. Um, so mine um, was a little bit different. I was serving um, in another healthcare system up in Michigan. I was serving in nursing and nursing leadership. And um, one of the 
afternoons, we were all called to the large auditorium and we were informed that everyone in our hospital system was going to take a one to 10% pay cut with a two year pay freeze. And, and this was probably about 15, 17 years ago. And I watched as wonderful nurses and nursing leaders left the organization. The upsetness at the front line was, was huge with having to take a pay cut. And at that point in my life, I said, you know, how did this happen? Why do we have to all take pay cuts? And, and why is healthcare being hit so hard? And so my father was a hospital administrator and he had served as a mentor for me for um, all of my career. And what was interesting was he really encouraged me to go back to school, lean into this and really figure out healthcare system leadership and understand that clinical revenue cycle. And that is where I went back to school. And that was a, a big thing for me to go from more traditional nursing work to move into that clinical revenue cycle and understanding care management, discharge planning, utilization management, and how the hospitals get paid, and clinical documentation integrity, the importance of our documentation and, and how we get paid. And so that was where I, during my schooling with my master's, I had a residence, residency with the vice president of care coordination and case management. And we really focused on length of stay and readmission reduction. And as many MSN programs with residencies do, they lead you to another job. Mm -hmm. And I ended up being the program manager where I was focusing on the interdisciplinary healthcare team's care coordination. And that was both within and outside of the hospitals. And that was where we placed care managers all across our system in primary care. We placed them in post-acute care. Um, obviously we already had them in the hospital but we connected everyone with our insurance company care managers as well. And so that was where at one point I was asked, come into the hospitals, lean into care management, social work and utilization management and implement a new model of care within that clinical revenue space. And that's where we delineated nurse care managers and social worker care managers and utilization management nurses. And that was where we were able to really help our social workers work at the top of their license, top of their skill set, and provide psychosocial interventions for our patients across both inpatient and the emergency departments. And that was where we were able to have our nurse care managers and social worker care managers really partner with bedside nursing as well as our physicians to collaborate care to have an efficient process through the hospital stay for that patient. Thank you for that. So Janine, can you describe care management duties from an RN perspective? Yes. Um, a nurse care manager may focus a little bit differently than a social worker care manager, although there's many parts of the role that are similar. But the nurse may focus a little bit more on what are the exact medication side effects, um, things that we need to worry about, what are the, the clinical picture with the disease monitoring that has to occur, um, medical necessity? Are we having enough go on with the patient that there's going to be necessity that a payer will pay for the stay? And also the clinical monitoring that will be needed for that patient after they leave the hospital. Um, what's different with a care manager, though, that's a nurse is they can take verbal orders from a physician and enter them into the electronic medical record, and that definitely can assist with discharge planning. But, but I have to say, whenever I talk about nurse care managers and social worker care managers, the key to a great care management model is having both. When you have both in the front line and both in the leadership, you have that holistic care of patients that really does well. At Advent Health, I'm thrilled that we have a combined model where nurses and social workers work together and they collaborate with the interdisciplinary team to help those patients with their discharge off to whatever their next destination may be. What's interesting is patients no longer heal in the hospital. They heal after they're in the hospital. So care manager, nurses and social workers working together can help those patients heal and have all that, the wraparound services that they need to be successful wherever they land after having their life change with whatever occurred in the hospital. Both nurses and social workers are so valuable to any great care management department.
Christine, if you could, uh, please talk to us about how the responsibilities differ for uh, social workers in this in this case. Social workers are educated to view each patient holistically. So whether we're working on a hospital surgical unit or maybe working in the emergency department, they are going to view the patient from many perspectives, such as socially, financial, physical, psychological, and they take all of these into account to develop their plan. I honestly and wholeheartedly agree with what Janine just shared. Having both nurses and social workers who are trained differently, but have their specialized knowledge and education where they can lean on each other's expertise is very important. We have social workers that perform discharge planning that Janine spoke to, but we also have licensed clinical social workers that can provide advanced psychosocial interventions, who can intervene with patients who have complex psychosocial needs, patients that maybe require assistance with eligibility, determinations of social programs, funding sources, and qualify for community assistance from a variety of special assistance programs. And agencies and other required assistance with transitions of care or discharge planning. Social workers can offer crisis interventions to patients and family with psychosocial needs. They can coordinate and facilitate the development of the discharge plan for high-risk patient populations as well. Thank you. And so, Janine, I wanted to figure out how you were able, or maybe not how you orchestrated your corporate team, but what what that looks like. So org chart, you know, just understanding, yes, you're the director, um, but how does everything sit and how does that look as far as some of the additional uh, employees and the titles that you have on your team? So it's, it's interesting, the background of how we came to corporate. Um, Advent Health, about three and a half years ago, took our utilization management and care management departments and delineated them. So they were together at corporate, together in many of our campuses, and those two roles were delineated. Care management to really work on that discharge planning, care coordination, and utilization management to work more on our payer relationships, collaboration, and, and making sure the hard work that nurses and physicians and everyone in the hospital does is reimbursed. And so by delineating those two, we had to move across the company and work with every campus to have that new model for care management implemented with standard work. We worked um, with PwC, um, Price Waterhouse Cooper. They're a consulting company. We also worked with organizational effectiveness and human resources. And we worked with the local care management leaders and executives. Local leaders drive outcomes. And that was where in our org chart, our corporate care management team has more of an oversight dotted line with the campuses. The campuses actually report up through an expert care management leader or a care management executive, maybe a CNO, CMO, or, or CFO. So as we worked on implementing this model, we really wanted to have both a corporate market and, and campus teams be connected so that this standard work would drive the best patient experiences, the best practices, all related to discharge planning, and that really important interdisciplinary collaboration with the whole clinical team. Thank you so much. And, and Christine, how have you per personally witnessed success within this model pertaining to um, the team members involved and the patients as well? Great question. Thank you so much. We had a uninsured 40-year-old male that was in one of our hospitals that had a severe stroke. Care management had a extremely hard time with this person's discharge plan because he didn't have insurance. He was a young stroke patient and he didn't really have a good support system. So he didn't really have family or friends that can care for him after his hospitalization. So his care manager advocated for him and presented this case for this patient to the CFO who agreed to a single patient agreement to allow him to go to an inpatient rehabilitation center that specialized in stroke patients. A few months later, this patient came back to the hospital walking with a walker 
and thanked care management for saving his life and allowing him to return to a functional person, not only at home, but at school and at work. It's clear that if this patient were to go to a facility that only provided three days of a, three days a week rehabilitation, he probably would have never walked again. And I love sharing the story because he is a young individual where care management was able to advocate for him and was able to give him his life back. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's it's a beautiful story, um, and it def definitely seems rewarding, especially for you and your team uh, to be doing the work that you're doing. And I just want to make sure I understand, especially for our listeners and as well as myself. So, utilization management where they're where they're coming to play is more so on the whether like the payer, like insurance, right, and making sure that the work that you're doing is actually viable and necessary, and then then the social work care management part, uh, I know you mentioned discharge planning. How much work do you do with the families, you know, in talking with not not just the patient, right, but the family of the patient? And if you could kind of give me, you know, some background on the amount of time that you spend with those, those families, whether that's, you know, talking with them, uh, providing counseling for them and things like that. So key, I want to clarify with utilization management, they're um, focusing on the payer communications, the physician documentation of medical necessity, and making sure the hard work of everyone is, is reflected in that chart so that the payers, the insurance companies, are going to reimburse. Um, and if they choose not to reimburse, our utilization management team works to obtain that reimbursement, um, and they have physician advisors who, who work on it. Now, with care management, we follow a process that begins um, within the first day or two of admission where the care manager really assesses that patient for their discharge planning needs. Um, as Christine shared, what are their psychological, social, financial, um, what kind of support do they have? What are the clinical needs that are being expressed by the physician and, and our frontline nurses? And as they look at that, they come up with an anticipated plan. It might be that with this patient's situation, they need to most likely go to a skilled nursing facility. We work with physical therapy and the family to say, okay, this is where we're sort of looking at. Um, we wanna start preparing for this. The care manager helps the patient who their first question is, how much is this gonna cost me? So they share with patients and their families, here's what your out of pocket costs may be. They may have to take a medication that's very expensive. The care manager can say, you know what, there are some alternatives. Um, let me talk to your physician and maybe there's a different antibiotic that we could have you put on that's not going to be so expensive. The care managers, if their patient is going to home care, they're working with the patient and the family to help and make sure, okay, he now has a walker. We've got to make sure that they can get into the bedroom, into the living room, to the kitchen. So all of those things are what they coordinate to help. So what, when that discharge day comes, that patient has their transportation, and that may or may not be set up by care management, but they're able to go into their house. And sometimes patients don't have a house. They don't have utilities. Those are all things that care managers help patients with so that when they leave the hospital, our extending the healing ministry of Christ doesn't stop at the hospital doors. It continues. And that takes a lot of careful, thoughtful communication um, and, and collaborations with patients and families. And as you know, that's not always easy, yeah. but it's so much an important part of our mission. I, I thank you for explaining that and going into great detail. And, and, and I'm sure the work is it can be can be difficult because it's not a one size fits all. Janine, just to continue on in, in regards to the way that you've aligned the system here at Advent Health and what sets us apart from other uh, healthcare organizations, can you talk about how you keep the team aligned across the system to operate at the high quality that, that you all do here at Advent Health? Guy, I love that question because the 55 campuses of care managers and leaderships, they do not report to us here at corporate. And so key to alignment is having shared design and decision-making across all of our hospitals. So core to our care management structure is the, we call it a bow tie model. And this is where we have 
our corporate care management on one side where we connect with the other corporate departments, um, CDI, UM, quality, nursing, hospice medicine, et cetera. And on the other side of the bow tie, we have our frontline care managers who are reporting up through their care management leadership and they're carrying out those operations. They're the ones touching those patients every day. But the, where the magic happens in the bow tie is in the middle. And this is where we have monthly structures and meetings with market and campus care management leaders across the continuum um, or across our company. And what we do is we hear them. We, we bring up the troubles, they bring us any troubles, and we figure out what does our electronic medical record need to look like in order to solve that? What do we need to do with a policy in order to solve that? And so we work together with our campuses and it's, it's really very rewarding to work with so many you know, talented individuals. Um, I'll give you a good example of the bow tie model. Um, set CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, um, about two years ago, we heard that they were gonna require social determinants of health questions for all inpatients. And so as we saw what was coming from the government and we saw we've got to figure out how are we going to add work to our front line and add a lot more about what was happening around that patient outside the hospital to what we were going to figure out while they're here in the hospital. And what was interesting with this federal regulation, our care management market leader said, Number one, we can't just add work to the front line. The last thing they want to do is see 10 more questions, 10 more minutes to the work they do with every patient every day. And so that was where there was concern. And so we worked with our markets and our IT team, and we literally leaned out the care management documentation. Our IT team helped us move it into a navigator form. And even though we had to add more questions to the care management evaluation for discharge planning. In reality, the care managers clicking in our electronic medical record decreased by 14%. We were very excited about that and we wouldn't have done that if we just tried to do things separately. But we all came together with this bow tie model and really worked on what could the best plan be. And key to the bow tie model is it really helps us at Advent Health have great stewardship of resources. We avoid duplication, and we also save everyone time by aligning and collaborating upfront. And that is how we really keep alignment across our healthcare system within the care management world. So and this question is for, for both of you. ACMA, what does that organization mean? What do they seek to accomplish? And, and what is our involvement with ACMA? Christine, do you want to go first? Absolutely. So ACMA is the American Case Management Association. They are a national nonprofit professional membership association for care management and transitions of care in the healthcare delivery system. They keep us up to date regarding any regulations and upcoming new statutes, which is very, very helpful. I actually am a former ACMA Florida chapter board member, very proud to say that. And Janine and I have actually presented at the National ACMA Conference last year in Washington, D.C., and we presented again this year at the National ACMA Conference in Nashville. That's amazing. Shout out to you guys, both uh, you ladies, excuse me, uh, both representing Advent Health in, in that way. That's that's amazing. Yeah, definitely want to say that this is one of the associations that Advent Health shows up at that national conference, and that's how I personally was connected to Janine and Christine here on the podcast. And we have several other nursing associations um, throughout Advent Health that we support and we try to show up for our internal team members as well. So for those of you listening internally, um, that's just a little plug for that in regards to our national conferences and how we try to show up to support you all. And um, again, the, the work that they're doing is highlighted on a national stage. So it's so important to know and recognize that. And again, for us to show our support as an organization for them and all that Janine and Christine do. So thank you both for, um, for sharing that. And as far as, um, you know, next steps in the department and, and what Avent Health is doing to becoming a highly reliable organization, Christine, do you think you could uh, speak to that for us and what that looks like for Avent Health? 
So we promote healthy culture at all levels, first by listening and being curious, really asking those questions. Also through curiosity, we wanna make sure that we're clarifying and having open communication. It is extremely imperative to prevent unnecessary harm to patients and improve quality of healthcare. Therefore, we always remind our care managers and reinforce, if you see something, say something. And Janine, can you share with our listeners a major turning point in your career and and how that has impacted your life today? I think some of the things that we think about when we think of a major turning point, um, you know, I shared how seeing so many people take pay cuts, including myself, and, and, and saw what it did to an organization. That was a huge change in the direction of my career. Um, I think for me, the turning point um, that really changed both my life professionally and personally um, was something that helped me realize that we have so much more power and ability to impact so many people than what we realize. And to do that, we have to have collaboration and and partnership. So years ago up in Michigan, I was a nurse educator at the time and I was teaching a a new med surge class and and we were going over all of the pathophys and and work that they needed to be able to know how to do. And um, all of a sudden we heard this large boom and we had a classroom across the street from our level one trauma center. And there had been a helicopter that was supposed to land on the roof and instead it crashed onto the roof. Mm -hmm. It lit our children's and women's hospital tower on fire. And um, we walked out of the room and we didn't know it was a helicopter crash at that time. All we saw was the top of the building on fire. And I I looked at the group of brand new nurses and I thought I've got to either motivate and have them help help, or I got to have them stay and keep safe. And what was interesting was every single one of them said, Janine, we're with you, tell us what to do. And so I ran across the street with them. We ran into the building that was on fire and everybody's running out of the building. And um, we went to the, the area of where we saw a lot of activity and we ended up going up nine floors. And once you made your way up, then they would give you a pediatric patient And um, a lot of these children, we would carry them on mattresses, um, stretchers, holding their IV poles and everything and bring them down the stairs. And then laterally, once we got to the first floor, off to safety. And it was one of the most incredible experiences where um, it was after 9-11 and so um, soon after. And so when the gas was leaking on everybody in the stairwell, people knew this could blow up. This could be it. And nobody slowed down everyone focused. And and that's what's incredible with healthcare. It's incredible with care management. We lean in and say, what do we need to do to fix this? Um, We don't stop to feel, do I want to go into that building? You just do it. And um, that was just really empowering for me. And it it didn't end there where after we got everybody to safety, um, then we had to figure out how do we open up new units, cafeteria, you know, open units that, that were being having construction. And so I was given a unit and there wasn't even toilet paper on the unit. And so we were like, we need everything. So they gave me a team of folks and I had these brand new nurses and we could say, you, paper towels, we need to get them in every room. And we were able to get this floor ready in two hours for all these patients who had been displaced. And so this really speaks a lot to disasters, bad things happen, but with God's help, we can do anything by collaborating with each other, partnering across the disciplines and saying, today, we're going to make this an amazing day, despite a helicopter crash down the hospital. And so that was really exciting. And coming to Florida 10 years ago, working in a faith-based organization, um, that has only fueled me even more to see the wonderful work we can do to help extend that that healing ministry of Christ to our staff, to our leaders. And then that translates to caring for our patients and their families, even after they're in the hospital. So um, that was just a really, helicopter crash was a big impact on me. Yeah, Janine, that, I mean, that is just an incredible story. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Thank God you all had that motivation to go in and to, to, to help and, um, it's just, it's an incredible 
it's an incredible feeling to know that these are the people, you all are the people taking care of our communities. You all are the ones leaning in and wanting to be there and the ones running towards the fire, not away. And I think as coming from two non-clinical people here on this podcast, it's something that we're grateful for because that's not what, what we were called to do. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for um, you know, opening up that story to us and our listeners. And, and we hope that that inspires others as, as well. And um, as we come to a, a close, obviously, you both are so motivated to care and help for others. And um, you, you have different motivations for, for each of you. But um, I'm sure there's been a lot of rewarding moments in your, in your care management career. I'll start with uh, Christine. Would you mind just sharing one of the most rewarding moments of your care management career? There's so many of them. But for me, the most rewarding aspect to care management is really, really meeting the patient where they're at. So as far as their clinical and social needs and being able to help that patient and their family navigate the healthcare system. Care management, they do care. They care tremendously about their patients. And we engage and collaborate with teams that are partnering with the patient and the family. And this includes leadership. It includes culture like teamwork and collaboration. It includes healthy environments by being concise and aligned. And having personal accountability is very important. It also includes knowledge through data and transparency. It includes a learning system to implement, improve, and learn by truly placing the patient in the center of everything that we do. Thank you so much, Christine. And Janine? I think when I, when I think of care management, I think of the people performing the roles. They're amazing. When you go to an ACMA conference, you walk in and you say, these are my people. Um, and so that's where I, I look at care managers who, they have the really difficult job and, and they're charged with finding a place for hospitalized patients who are having some of their most difficult circumstances in their life. And typically hospitalized patients didn't plan that whatever happened to them and now they have to adjust and so while many patients can go home after discharge, care managers, we spend the majority of our time with those who don't have family. You know, they, they don't have a home. They don't have anyone that cares for them. And so we have to, they may not even have a decision maker and they're no longer making their own decisions. So if you've ever had a loved one say, you know, I'm in the hospital, they want me to go to a skilled nursing facility, help, what do I do? Those are difficult circumstances. Or that patient who... They're, they're in a circumstance where hospice is appropriate. Those initial conversations, those are difficult things. And, and as we look at that expert problem solving of care managers, it's our frontline teams that put wind in my sails every day when you, when you hear the stories, as Christine has shared. Um, they figure out how to do what they need to do in the most difficult circumstances. And so I, I was inspired by one of my favorite um, care managers. His name was Owen Fruksma. And, and as, as although he has passed, he is in so many people's hearts because he's impacted so many people. And during social work month one year, he said, um, and I'll, I'll read a quote, um, every day I am given the blessing and privilege of reminding myself and teaching others that to be healed does not necessarily mean to be cured, that a dying person is still a living person. And that embracing hope is not a singular pursuit, but a never ending journey. So Owen captured, in my opinion, the heart of care management, that there's always hope. There's always a plan that can be figured out. And our leaders and frontline team in care management, they help patients be whole beyond the hospital doors. And so this is accomplished with really you know, hard troubleshooting very difficult situations to help these patients. But um, that's my favorite aspect of care management are the people that choose this very difficult job that has a lot of pressure um, when you think of the clinical revenue cycle and, and length of stay, but they know they have to have a safe, wonderful plan that's going to meet this patient's needs and their families and help them all feel whole after they leave the doors of the hospital. 
Janine, thank you so much. And Christine, thank you as well. Thank you both so much for joining us today and for sharing your passion and for, for reminding us of the hope that that is for those that are maybe currently hospitalized or for family members that are dealing with certain health issues. Um, there's, there are different levels of inspiration and uh, uh, care that you've shown throughout this conversation today. So we appreciate you uh, giving us your time and being able to highlight care management. It's, um, like you said, a very difficult field to be in and not always well understood and known. So so we hope that this episode today really highlights that world and um, maybe will inspire others to join the care management field in the future as well. So thank you both so very much. And thank you for listening to the Whole Career Podcast. Um, please follow us at Life at Avent Health and subscribe on all of your favorite podcast platforms. And until next time, take care.